Hello everybody, my name is Matthew and I'm the lead science presenter here at TELUS World of Science Edmonton. We're here for Feeding Friday where we're going to learn some cool facts about our animal ambassadors. Shh, they're still sleeping. They've been up all night. Well, to be fair, they are nocturnal, which means they're active in the nighttime and then sleep during the day. Let's take a look at our guests. Today, we're going to be meeting our sugar gliders, George and Badger. One of the most common questions we get asked about the sugar gliders is what type of animal they are. Let's take a few minutes to examine some of their unique adaptations and see if we can figure it out. But first, I want you to take a guess. What type of animal do you think they are? Do you think they are a rodent, like a squirrel? A primate, like lemurs and monkeys? Or a marsupial, like a kangaroo or koala? Let's begin by looking at some features on our glider's head. They have large protruding eyes located quite far apart. The size, shape, and location of their eyes provide a few advantages. They can take in a lot of light and have a very wide field of view. Do their eyes seem shiny to you? Like many nocturnal animals, the gliders display eye shine, which helps them absorb as much light as they can. Now let's look at their ears. Not only are their ears quite large, but they can be moved. Are you able to move your ears? Some people can wiggle their ears if they try really hard, but sugar gliders can actually swivel their two ears independently. They can use these radar dish ears to pinpoint the location of a sound with incredible accuracy. Check out that bald spot on the top of their heads. That's a scent gland. Male sugar gliders, like George and Badger here, have four scent glands across their body. They use these glands to produce a strong smelling secretion that they will spread across their territory. Each glider family has its own unique smell. Of course, the most distinctive adaptation of the sugar glider is their ability to glide. There is a furry membrane called a patagium connecting their wrist to their ankle. When they want to glide, they stretch out their limbs and stretch that membrane so that they can catch some air. Subtle movements of their limbs, torso, and long tail control their direction and rate of fall. Oh, good boy. Sugar gliders are omnivores, which means they eat both meat and vegetables. In their native forests of Australia, they like to eat things like sap, pollen, and nectar from eucalyptus trees. For protein, they'll go after small insects or arachnids, but they've even been known to take down a bird every once in a while. Let's make a meal for them right now. We've got some protein sources here for them. We've got some fruits and vegetables. For protein today, I was thinking we would give them some yogurt. Get some of that into their bowl. Oh, very good. I'm gonna get them some fruits and vegetables. Cut up nice and small for them. All right. I'm gonna put that right in with their yogurt, like a nice little parfait. There we go. Delicious. And we've got some dried food for them as well. To make sure that we hit all of their nutritional requirements. Do two spoonfuls of that. Oh, fantastic. Bon appetit. Now that we have learned a little bit more about our sugar gliders, let's see if you have figured out what type of animal they are. The correct answer is marsupial. 
That means when sugar gliders have babies, or joeys, they carry them around in a pouch. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next week.